Oh, Lord. DJ Robbie Ten Piece Gangbang McNuggers back in the house again. Uh, when I started Radio Robbie, I never would have thought we would have got to this point. It's been a fantastic ride, guys. But always, let my sensual voice ride you on home. So, we're going to be talking about Does Money Buy Skill in Yu Gi Oh? Well, fuck yes, it does. Uh, the way that the current format is going over here, fucking Slim Shady could be playing the game of Yu Gi Oh! and he could be good at this game. The only thing you have to know is how to uh, insert the penis inside of the vagina, and you will be able to basically produce results in the game of Yu Gi Oh! It's uh, really weird. You know, you've always heard the saying, Does money buy friendship? Yeah. It does, but if you know you're on the ground getting the shit beat out of you, all you gotta do is toss money at them to come defend you. So I, I guess it's kind of the same thing as friendship. Maybe the older I get, the more diluted I get. Huh. Maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> oh man, but it's it's a sad mentality now. Like, okay, so back in the day, you know, you where you could like honestly play any variant of a, a stun deck or something, eh, we'll say Teledad. Like, if you had any sort of skill and things like that, you could try to grind out the matchup, uh, try to build a strategy, maybe get a little bit lucky. I mean, these formats were predominantly, like, tier zero based, so don't get me wrong. Uh, there was a lot of issues with them, but if you could break that format, you had a lot of skill. And that's the difference between now and then. I mean, granted, in, in the previous format, and a little bit more today, you've got five, six decks uh, as opposed to the last one, where you could have played d about ten different variants of said decks and had a chance to do anything. But problem was, people had money. Yeah, they they had more skill, <laughs> uh, wider range of cards. Somebody's like, what? So what's the comparison I was trying to make here? So, if I have more money, which means I have more cards, which means I have more things to go on. And especially in today's current format, where most decks are combo-based, as long as I can rinse, wash, and repeat and regurgitate that combo for 7 to 9 round tournament, congratulations, then I should be able to win, right? Like, that's all that honestly matters. You know, skill equals money. It's We can draw a flowchart for you at some point if you would honestly like, but I don't foresee it happening. Wow, trains happening at this stage of the day. Very beautiful. Gotta give a shout out to the Transcontinental Railroad. For some reason, we still need it. Just like we still need the USPS. <sighs> you guys know that Goki deck that you just picked up? You're like, oh man. All I need to know is just how to link summon, produce a large board, and play with my STD. And before somebody's like, did Robbie just make a sexual disease joke? No. STD is short for self-touching duck. And Goki very much is not an STD 100% of the way. Watching the deck and the combos that it produces, yeah, your opponent's going to be there for maybe 5 to 15 minutes touching themselves as they're producing this rather large board. And the problem is, unlike Pendulum Magician and True Draco, I, I would say that... We're definitely in a much heavier self-touching format than in previous formats, just because of you got the deck, you got the combo. Did your opponent open up the two hand traps? Yes or no? Like, there's a whole flow chart here. God, I keep making a lot of references to flow charts. A really big shame you guys can't see them right now. Ah, but just imagine having a doll, and they're like, "What happened to the doll?" And as you throw it out your window, yeah. That, and that's every Goki player ever, just beating up the meta. Feels really bad, man. Like, <sighs> Goki's such a degenerate deck. Then you've got the Sky Striker players that are going to be like, oh, hey, by the way, we're just incredibly rich because <laughs> we can play the deck. Now, the only variant and argument I can make to this is literally Sky Striker. Sky Striker does require some amount of skill to play, even if you're rich. You can't really get out of that one. But money still equals skill for Goki. Oh, 100% of the time. I would even make an argument for Trickstar. But money equals skill if you can play Goki. Link summon, link summon, link summon. Ha ha. Link Shokan. Uh, Alright, well, my anime website is out now, so. 
me is just let this continue to roll. By the way, Darling in the Franks is the greatest thing ever. Except for Cucky Go. She ruined everything. <sighs> Fucking hate Yu-Gi-Oh, man. Some days, it's... I, I love watching... You, you can obviously tell when you go to a regional who the rich kid is. It just had his parents buy the deck for him. And he's just learning the deck. I, I also love that, by the way. I, I never really understood, like... Well, how are you going to just get the best deck in the format and just not play test it before you go to an event? Alright? Like, I understand there might be some precognitive things that happen to you during the week or something. Or your work schedule prevents you from testing this. But I love when you go to an event and you're just like, Oh, sweet, man. Like, this is fucking awesome. I can't wait to, you know, play. And then you, you hear the best thing ever. Hey, I'm new here. I don't know what I'm doing. And the new end of match procedures are in effect, and you're watching your opponent take a 22 minute turn one, playing Goki, trying to self proficiently build a board. And you can't can't call a judge on him because he's making his moves in an accurate time. It just so happens that you know every 10 seconds he's like, do this, resolve this, give me 20 seconds to search out my two Gokis because I have two effects on standby. Ugh. Just a nightmare, man. Yu-Gi-Oh is not fun. I definitely think that ample playtesting is, like, the most important thing that you need right now. I, I can't stress that enough. Especially if you're one of these people that's spending all of this money. Like, like I said, money equals skill. But, don't you need some sort of basic understanding? I, I guess. Summon two monsters, make a soul day, ask opponent for a response. Opponent has nothing. Make co-linked board. Ask opponent for a response. Opponent has nothing. Extra link has been produced. You know, you've officially did what you needed to do. Like, <laughs> once again, if you have money, you've produced the best result in the format. Congratulations. Even so much with Pendulum FTK back in the day. Like, if you had the money and you knew how to, to activate Instant Fusion, well, you did it. Congratulations. Robbie, why are you being so down right now, man? Like, what? It's not even being down, guys. It's, it's the realistic expectations of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, you have to have some sort of money to amply produce results. And I, I agree with you guys. Yeah, things are getting a little bit cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. Budget players, I think, have had a better chance now than they've ever had in their life. 100%. I, I, I stand by that statement. Things are better for you than they've been, except maybe Frog FTK days where you could spend $40 to have the deck. But as things stand now, you're definitely doing better than you once were. You know? But just remember, if you do have... This is some honest advice. So you're working your, your 9 to 5 or your 8 to 5 or your 9 to 6 or what, whatever's going on in your life. All right? You're working that. You've saved up all this money. You've been too busy to play test. You're working 16 hours a day and things like that. My honest advice to you is just because you're getting the deck and whatnot, spend at least five minutes to read up on what's going on with the deck. That way you have a generalistic idea of what you're doing. Because if you don't, your round one opponent's going to continuously call judge on you because they're going to be belligerently mad at you for quote-unquote stalling, but you just don't know the basic strategy. And I mean, I, I've done this before. I've gone to events with gadget builds in the past, and I didn't know what the general results were going to be. And that's fine. You know, I, I have a general systematic knowledge of what gadgets do and whatnot. You know, it's going to be just like, oh, did I draw X tech card? Or this is really fucking cool, this works this way. I think there were a couple times where I took Monarchs to events, and I would slowly, like, learn what the deck did um once again systematic or systematic testing and error and you know you'll get the hang of it eventually type of thing but if you are going down the path of this do yourself a little bit of a favor and make sure that you have the knowledge to back up that big flaunty std that you're trying to just enforce on everybody oh god i I really, really hate STDs and formats, but 
you know what, it's it's okay that they exist because somebody's got to do it. And as long as it's not me, it's all that matters. <sighs> DJ Chicken Nuggers, just reminding you all that money equals skill and money equals friends. It's a cynical time to be alive. All right, guys, DJ Chicken McNugget reminding you all that if you are sitting there crying yourself to sleep at night, just remember... You could be working at McDonald's playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And you ain't gonna be having a tier one deck doing that your whole life. Robbie, are you really shooting on people working at McDonald's? Nope. I'm just saying that if you're working minimum wage and you're trying to play fucking a tier one deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! One of these things is not like the other. Do Serenos.